Lenapel. Leninger Principles of Biochemistry. Chapter 1 The Foundations of Biochemistry. Part 1 Cells are the structural and functional units of all living organisms. Hey there, welcome to our YouTube video on the amazing world of cells. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of biochemistry to explore the fundamental unit of life, the cell. So, what exactly is a cell? Well, think of it as the building block of all living organisms. Whether it's a tiny microorganism or a complex multicellular organism, they all share certain structural features that make them a cell. One key feature of a cell is the plasma membrane. It's like the protective barrier that surrounds the cell, separating its contents from the outside world. It's made up of lipid and protein molecules, forming a tough, flexible wall around the cell. Inside the cell, we have the cytoplasm, a watery solution containing a variety of suspended particles with specific functions. These include the nucleus or nucleoid, which houses the genetic material, and membrane-bounded organelles like mitochondria and chloroplasts. Now, here's an interesting fact. The size of cells is actually limited by the need to deliver oxygen to all parts of the cell. This means that cells have to maintain a certain size to function effectively. But wait, there's more. When we compare cells from different organisms, we find that they all have a similar set of fundamental properties, regardless of their complexity or size. This is where biochemistry comes into play, helping us understand the common principles that underlie life. By comparing DNA sequences, scientists have placed organisms into three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. It's like a giant family tree that shows how all living organisms are connected through their shared ancestry. Now, let's talk about the amazing processes happening within the cell. From energy extraction to precise self-replication, cells are like bustling cities with a multitude of activities going on at the molecular level. One of the key concepts in biochemistry is entropy which refers to the randomness or disorder of the components of a chemical system. Despite this, living organisms exist in a dynamic steady state, never at equilibrium with their surroundings. Cellular dimensions are limited by diffusion. When we talk about cellular dimensions, we're referring to the size of cells, which can vary from organism to organism. And when we talk about diffusion, we're talking about the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Now, let's dive into why cellular dimensions are limited by diffusion. As cells grow in size, their surface area to volume ratio decreases. This means that the surface area available for molecules to enter the cell becomes smaller in proportion to the volume of the cell. As a result, it becomes more difficult for molecules to efficiently travel across the cell membrane through diffusion. So, why does this matter? Well, cells need to take in nutrients and get rid of waste in order to function properly. If the cell becomes too large, diffusion becomes less effective, making it harder for the cell to maintain its internal environment. To illustrate this concept, let's think about a balloon. When a balloon is small, it's easy to blow air into it and let air out. But as the balloon gets bigger, it becomes more difficult to inflate and deflate because the surface area to volume ratio changes. In the same way, as cells grow larger, their ability to efficiently exchange molecules through diffusion becomes limited. This is why cells have a maximum size limit dictated by the effectiveness of diffusion. Understanding the limitations of cellular dimensions by diffusion is crucial in understanding the basic principles of cell biology and how cells function in their environment. Organisms belong to three distinct domains of life. Have you ever wondered how all living organisms are classified into different groups? The development of techniques for determining DNA sequences has greatly improved our understanding of evolutionary relationships among organisms. Similarities between gene sequences provide deep insight into the course of evolution. All living organisms fall into one of three large groups, or domains, that define the branches of the evolutionary tree of life. These domains are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Bacteria and archaea are two large groups of single-celled microorganisms distinguished on genetic and biochemical grounds. Bacteria inhabit various environments, while many archaea inhabit extreme conditions such as salt lakes, hot springs, and acidic bogs. Eukaryotic organisms, which make up the third domain, eukarya, evolved from the same branch that gave rise to the archaea. Eukaryotes are more closely related to archaea than to bacteria. 
Comparisons of gene sequences have revealed that the genomes of different species share homologous genes, reflecting the changing genomes of evolving organisms. Functional genomics allows us to group genes according to the processes in which they function, providing insights into the allocation of genes to specific cellular activities. Understanding the three domains of life and the allocation of genes to specific cellular processes is crucial in advancing our knowledge of evolutionary relationships and the classification of organisms. Organisms differ widely in their sources of energy and biosynthetic precursors. Let's start by understanding the two broad categories based on energy sources, phototrophs and chemotrophs. Phototrophs are organisms that harness energy from sunlight, while chemotrophs derive their energy from the oxidation of chemical fuels. Some chemotrophs even oxidize inorganic compounds like sulfur and iron for energy. Now, let's talk about how organisms obtain carbon for synthesizing cellular material. Autotrophs are capable of synthesizing all their biomolecules directly from carbon dioxide, while heterotrophs require preformed organic nutrients made by other organisms. This distinction helps us classify organisms based on their mode of nutrition. In the microbial world, we encounter a diverse array of bacteria and archaea. Bacterial cells, such as Escherichia coli, have a protective outer membrane and an inner plasma membrane that encloses the cytoplasm and the nucleoid. On the other hand, archaeal membranes can differ in structure and composition, but they all have a single membrane surrounded by an outer layer. When we look at the broader picture, it's truly remarkable to see how organisms have evolved to adapt to various ecological niches. From the sunlit surface of the ocean to the extreme environments of hot springs and acidic bogs, different organisms have developed unique strategies to thrive and survive. In conclusion, the diversity of microbial life is a testament to the incredible adaptability and resilience of living organisms. By understanding the different sources of energy and biosynthetic precursors, we gain valuable insights into the complex web of life on our planet. So, that's a wrap. We hope you found this video informative and insightful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Don't forget to watch the second part of this video.